In these problems, we are calculating the surface areas of some composite three-dimensional shapes. So these are some problems that really, uh, none of the calculations are that hard, but just keeping everything straight and making sure you've covered every surface can be organizationally a little bit tricky. So let's see if we can organize this problem. We want to find the surface area of this thing. This is a three-dimensional object, so these are two pictures of the same thing. They're telling us the height of this is 12 yards. So in terms of the surface area, we've got this face, which looks like this. We've got the one underneath it, which is identical to it. And then you've got the strips around the outside. So I think the way I would organize this first is to figure out the surface area of this face and multiply that by two to get the top and the bottom. And then we'll work on the strips. So let's look at this thing. We've got, you know, a circular end. We've got a triangular end. In the middle, we've got basically a rectangle shape. And the easiest way to approach this is to cut it up into pieces that you know how to figure out the area for. Already, we've got a dashed line here that cuts this half circle away from the rest. That's a good start. I think I'm going to put another dashed line in here to separate the triangle. Because I know how to figure out the area of a triangle. I know how to figure out the area of a rectangle that's left in the middle. I know how to figure out the area of a circle. And I can just cut that in half to get the half circle here. All right, now I do need a few other numbers here. This whole length was 30. To get the base of my triangle, I need to figure out what this length is. And since this is 13 up here, this must be 30 minus 13, so that's 17. And now I could use the Pythagorean theorem to get the height of my triangle. Remember, this is a right triangle, so the height here is one of the sides. Um, I could, uh, you know, punch in 17 squared plus b squared equals um, 689 and figure that out. But before I go to that work, I notice over here, I've got a radius of this circle. And that means if this is 10, that means this is 10 too, because that's a radius. And this is 10 as well, because that's also a radius. So this is 20. If that's the case, then this is 20. So that saved me a little bit of calculation with the Pythagorean theorem. Now I think I'm ready to um, figure out the area of the triangle, the area of the rectangle, the area of the semicircle add those together and multiply by 2, and then we're probably about halfway there. So the area of the triangle is 1 half the base times the height. And that, in this case, would be 1 half times 17 times 20. Area of the rectangle is just length times width, and that would be 13 times 20. And the area of a circle is uh, pi r squared. We want half of that. So this is going to be 1 half times pi times r squared. So it's 10 squared. All right. And then we're going to multiply all of that by 2. So let's do a little quick calculation here. Let's see. This is 170. This is 260. This is 157.08. Add that together, you get 587.08. You multiply that by 2, you get 1,174.16. So that's the two big sides. All right, we're halfway there. Let's try to get these strips. And again, we're going to cut this up. If we look at the strip that would be here, it would be this strip here. And up to that da dashed line, which would be about there, this makes a rectangle. It's got a width of 12 and a length of 30. So one of the strips is 12 by 30. Now let's do the strip on this edge of the triangle here. We know the length there is square root of 689. That's also a width of 12, so 12 times square root of 689. Let's try this strip right here, right up until that dashed line. And that is a length of 13 and again a width of 12. And then finally, the strip that goes around the edge of the circle there. And the, the width is going to be 12 again, and the length of that is going to be half the circumference of a circle. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So half of that is just going to be pi r. So this is pi times 10 times 12 for the width. Now I think that's all the strips. So if we figure out what this is and then add it to this, we're going to be set. So let's see, um, 12 by 30, that's 360. 
12 times square root of 689, that's about 314. 12 times 13 is 156. And pi times 10 times 12 is about 377. And if we add all of those together and we add it to this, I think, you should check my math on this, but I think we're going to get 2,381.16. And these are yards, and this is surface area, so it's square yards. All right, let's try one more. All right, this is a tricky one. It says, calculate the surface area to the nearest tenth of a 16.2 meter cube with a hole two meters in diameter drilled through it. So let's think about this for a second. So you've got a big cube, 16.2 meters, that's huge. And then it's got a hole that's two meters across, drilled right through, all the way through to the bottom. So one of the things that happens here is that, you know, the surface area of the cube is pretty easy to figure out, right? So the surface area of the cube is going to be the area of each of the sides multiplied by the six sides. So that's just going to be 6 times 16.2 times 16.2. So length and width is the sides of each square face multiplied by the six faces. We're going to have to do a little bit more work though. When they drilled the hole, they, they took out that circle. So here and here, that those little circles are missing. So we need to subtract the surface area of the circle actually two of them, so two times the surface area of the circle. So what's that going to be? Well, our radius here, so they tell us the diameter is two, so the radius is one. That makes things a little bit easier. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So in this case, one squared is just one, so the area of our circle is just going to be pi. So when we subtract the two times the surface area of the circle, it's really going to be 2 pi that we're subtracting. All right, so we've got 6 times 16.2 times 16.2 minus 2 pi so far. But we're not done yet because inside there is now a cylinder that's been drilled through here, and that is the walls of that cylinder are actually more surface area. So we have to figure out the surface area of this cylinder. Remember, it doesn't have the two tops, the top and the bottom here. Those are just holes, but the walls of the cylinder. So if you think about a cylinder, it's got the two circular tops, and then if you unroll the stuff between them, it's a rectangle. The length, well, the height of that rectangle is going to be here 16.2, because that's how long the cube is. And uh, the length here is going to be the circumference of the circle. And the circumference here is well, 2 pi times r, r is 1, so the circumference is just going to be 2 pi. So we need to add this area, don't need to worry about the circles because they're not there, 2 pi times 16.2, so plus 2 pi times 16.2. All right, now once we do that, let's see, this chunk comes out to 1574.64, we're going to use 3.14 for pi, so this is two, minus 2 pi is minus 6.28. And 2 pi times 16.2 is going to be 101.736. And we do the calculation there. I think we come up with, and we're supposed to do this to the nearest square meter, so 1,670 meters squared. So that is how to figure out the surface area of some composite shapes.